Okay, so you've watched the previous videos rooted on the E and the A string and you're feeling pretty good about your chord game, but then what happens all too often, you're on an international flight, the crash lands in the ocean, you make it to a deserted island, and your guitar washes ashore with you and one other beautiful woman. You take out your guitar to impress her, but guess what? The E and the A strings have snapped. So now all your references for root notes are gone. What do you do? You know exactly what you do because you watch this video and you know how to root a hundred different chords on the D string, right? So we're just gonna go through nine different chord voicings. We can move these to any fret, 12 different notes. That's over a hundred chord voicings you're gonna learn in just a few short minutes. And we're gonna start with this one right here, okay? This is just a regular major chord voicing. Now what it is, if we had all six strings, it'd be a G major bar chord voicing, but we're gonna make it easier and just get these three strings right here. Your ring finger is gonna be the fifth fret on the D string, your middle finger is the fourth fret on the G string, and your index finger is the third fret on the B string. Now this is a G major chord. We can move this around, G sharp major, A major, A sharp major, B major, C major, so on and so forth. Also too, if you want a, a fuller sound, you can try to bar the bottom two strings, and that'll give you a, a four note major chord, right? We have a root, it's major third, it's fifth, and another root. Okay, so this is a tighter voicing of maybe like an open G chord. So there's a lot of different ways uh, that these can come in handy in your playing, right? So the first one is just regular major, okay? Now for every major chord, we're gonna want a minor chord to accompany it, and we're gonna choose this one right here. Okay, all I did is the same voicing, but I'm gonna throw my pinky down on the B string. So now I've got 5D, 4G, 5B, and optionally, the same three E. Now, even though I said we're rooting the chord on the D string, this isn't a minor chord. The, the root note of this chord isn't the D string, it's actually the B string, where my pinky is, that's an E note. This is an E minor chord. So even though it's not, the root note isn't on the D string, I'm still thinking of these as D string voicings because that's the lowest note, right? So we've got G major to E minor. Okay, and again, this is E minor, F minor, F sharp minor, G minor, so on and so forth, right? So, we've got these two major and minor chord voicings. Now the next one we're gonna do is gonna be right here. I'm barring the fifth fret, and I've got either my ring finger or my pinky on the seventh fret on the high E string. Now this is a major seven chord voicing where I'm thinking of the root actually being right here, okay? So the root note would be a C, this is a C major seven, now another way to look at the root note is just being wherever the G string is, right? So five, 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 seven gives you a C major seven voicing if you kind of bar the fifth fret. And then just like that, this would be a C sharp major seven, D major seven, so on and so forth, right? So after that, we're just gonna lift our pinky up. And now this is gonna be, I'm just barring five, 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 five. This is a minor seven chord voicing. And honestly, a lot of these, uh, the name of the chord is open to interpretation. So some of these can have different chord names uh, depending on the context in which you play them, but they're just great ones to learn to kind of like throw in uh, a key of your choosing, right? So, so far we've got major, minor, major seven, minor seven. And if we just want to make a little jam out of this, uh, we can do the same thing with open chords just to kind of hear the difference that you're getting, right? So if we do a G major to E minor, C major seven, A minor seven. Same chords with these voicings. Okay, so you can kind of hear a big difference even though they're the same chords just by kind of tightening up uh, the voicings and just getting the higher strings, okay? So four down, five to go. Uh, we're gonna go to a suspended chord voicing while we're here, right? So now I'm thinking of 5D. I've got a power chord, 7G. My pinky is gonna get the eighth fret of the B string, and I'm gonna bar it so I get the high E string fifth fret too. Now, if we think of this as our root note, this is a G. We have a G, it's fifth, another G, and an A. So this would be a G suspended two chord voicing, all right? And while we're on the topic of this G chord, let's make a G dominant seven chord voicing, a G7 chord voicing. All we do here, you have the same root note, the G, the fifth fret on the D string, a major third right there. I'm hitting the sixth fret of the B string, which is gonna be the seventh, the flat seven, the dominant seven of a G. And then for good measure, 
I'm gonna throw in another one of these. Right here, another B, another third, all right? So we've got five, four, six, seven. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda keep thinking of this G, and I'm gonna just hit the, the fifth here, and then I'm gonna bar the fifth fret. So I've got five, seven, five, five. Now, this is, we're gonna call this a G6 slash nine. You may have seen this chord before. What it is, is basically we're implying that it's a major chord and we're adding the sixth note in the major scale and the ninth note. So we have a G and it's fifth, the sixth note, uh, and we, have, we also have an E, G, A, B, C, D, E. And then right here, the, the A again, which is since it's the highest note, we're going all the way around. It's gonna be the ninth note. Now, so we have a G, a D, an E, and an A. Now we could also think of this as kind of like a minor class chord. And again, this is where the kind of uh, how you name the chord and how you perceive it can kind of give the same chord different names, but we're gonna call this a G six slash nine. And I promise you, no one will give you a hard time about that, especially on the internet, all right? So we've got that one. And then now we're gonna get to some uh, diminished chord voicings too, right? Another really cool one that I like, as long as we're still thinking of this as our root note. This is minor seven flat five chord voicing. So we have five D and then six, six, six on the D on the G, B and E strings, right? So this is gonna be the seven chord in a chord progression like we've talked about in some other videos, but a G minor seven flat five. So since that means if it's the seventh uh, degree in a key, it'll always resolve nicely on the one chord of that. So if G is our seven, that means this guy right here, uh, a flat is gonna be our one, will be the resolution. So we've got minor seven flat five into the chord voicing we learned earlier. So we can kind of like throw these together. And then just kind of take this diminished sound, this dissonance one step further, we're gonna play it like this to make a full diminished or diminished seven chord, right? So I've got five, six, five, six. Same rules apply, we can still resolve that on the one chord if we think of this as the seven, right? So those are nine different chord voicings that you can kind of move anywhere. They're, they're all closed voicings. You don't need the open strings to play them and you can use them you know, in any kind of key or progression, right? So let's go through them one more time. So we've got the major chord right here, G major, E minor, C major seven, A minor seven, We've got G suspended. We have G six slash nine. We have uh, G minor seven flat five. G diminished seven. And also uh, G seven. And I can't, I can't leave you hanging on that G seven. In fact, this kind of feels like, from the chord progression we did earlier, it kind of feels like it resolves on that A minor seven, even though a G seven would usually resolve on a, C, right? But basically, that's it. Over a hundred more chord progressions. There's definitely a lot of different ones you can use, but I think the main lesson is just kind of like experiment, even if you're just kind of manipulating these chords, right? So, like for instance, if we take that major chord, we make it minor, we add that, we can add that, we can get different chord voicings. I really think uh, a big thing of what helped me personally learn a lot of these chord voicings is just by experimenting and kind of grabbing different notes around them instead of always just kind of playing chords in open position. So anyways, hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments, Twitter, Instagram, or the website. Thanks a lot.